And that set up the crash course for the game, the championship game on Saturday night. Paker, Pacers, Lakers, you had pace versus physicality. You didn't know which one was going to win. And it was very, very clear from the get-go that the Pacers had literally zero answers for the Lakers' size or their physicality. I think the Lakers finished with, I want to double check, but I know they had at least 80 plus points in the paint in this mm-hmm. game. I think we made one three. Yeah, okay. no, they, there was the Lakers, I don't think, had a three until the fourth quarter of this game either. It, yeah, it was like, yeah, either late third or fourth. It was one. Three. Um, yes, points in the paint. The Lakers were two points shy of doubling the Pacers' points in the paint. The Pacers had 44, the Lakers had 86 of their 123 points coming from the paint. Unbelievable game from Anthony Davis, who finishes with 14, 41 and 20 with four blocks and five assists as well. LeBron adds in 24 points and 11 rebounds with four assists and two steals. Just uh, Austin Reeves, too, coming off the bench, 28 mm-hmm. points. He was huge in that game. Uh, you could feel the difference in this team as soon as he checks into the floor. So I'm going to defer over to you. Talk to me about what you saw from this Lakers team that worked so well and why they were able to to really shut down this explosive and fast-paced Pacers offense, which no one else was able to do throughout the course of this in-season tournament. Well, the main reason uh, why we were able to slow down the Pacers on offense is because our defense is elite. Okay, we have elite defenders all across the board. Um, obviously, Anthony Davis holding it down in the paint, but Cam Reddish stepping up, really buying in on the defensive end of the ball. We got Vando that comes and plays some good defense. We got TP that comes and plays some solid defense. Austin Reeves can play defense. We just got some good defense, and honestly, um, I feel like we made a point to get the ball out of Tyrese Halliburton's hands. Like a lot of times, he got doubled like earlier into possessions. Um, just seemed like we wanted anybody else to beat us, but it wasn't going to be Halliburton. Like anybody else on the floor could beat us, but him. Um, and it worked out because they couldn't really get much going. Like Tyrese, he creates for pretty much everybody. He runs the whole offense. He is the engine. So when you kind of just disrupt that a little bit, it kind of throws their whole offense like kind of out of whack. Um, so that's what we did defensively. Like you said, offensively, they just had no, they were just too small, bro. Like they were too small, too little. They were getting babied in the paint. Like Anthony Davis, what looked like Shaq, like legitimately he looked like Shaq. So um, then you mix that in with LeBron. LeBron is obviously like super, super smart when it comes to, you know, basketball IQ. You know, you know, LeBron gets those moments, you know, in certain games where he's chucking a lot of threes, taking a lot of shots. Like, now nah, he knew this game. Like, no, just give me the ball in the paint. Like, if, if Anthony Davis is not in, I'll be Anthony Davis really quickly. Give me the ball in the paint and just bully them. Um, mm-hmm. So that's kind of what we did. Like, our size, our length kind of disrupted him a little bit defensively and caused them problems um, on offense. So I feel like that was the main point. Not letting Tyrese Halliburton beat us, utilizing the fact that we have a huge size advantage and the fact that Miles Turner was in foul trouble for most of the game. Um, yeah, we we did what we were supposed to do, man. We came in, you know, we were locked in. Bron said he wanted to he wanted to play. Got Anthony Davis making the Kobe face. It's like, bro, we when we locked in like that, we we wanted the best, man. We wanted the best. So it was uh it was really good to see. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't really got much to say. Austin, like you brought it up, Austin Reeves off the bench was huge. I think he had mm-hmm. what, 20 points in the first half, I believe. Um, so he's, I mean, that whole season, we kind of talked about it through the awards. Like he's kind of been that spark off the bench for us. Um, he comes in, especially those LeBronless minutes. He kind of control runs the offense a little bit, can score, can facilitate. So that he was big for us. And yeah, we just, you know, we went out there, we wanted it. You know, the, it, it definitely felt like a playoff game. Like, I felt like I was watching, like, a game one of the finals. Not a game seven. It wasn't like that. But it yeah. was, like, it it could have been, like, a, you know, Western Conference finals, a game one of the finals. Like, it, mm-hmm. it was something like that. Definitely a playoff atmosphere, which was really, really cool. I was locked in the whole time. So, oh, yeah, it was, uh, it was good to see. It was good to see us, you know, win the first ever in-season tournament. Yeah, and I think it's cool because I feel like the the refs were officiating it to be like a playoff type game mm-hmm. um, where you had, like I said, as as much as the Lakers dominated the Pacers on the interior, it wasn't for a lack of effort. 
Aaron yeah. Neesmith was he was given everything he had. He had a lot of you know very quality defensive plays. He impressed me uh, for Indiana throughout this entire tournament. His impact um, coming off the bench for this team has been huge um, on both sides of the ball. He has moments on offense, but really his defense, his intensity, his hustle, um, playing bigger than his frame um, that was huge for them throughout this this you know entire entire in season tournament. It just it wasn't enough against the Lakers. Like you said, Miles Turner getting into foul trouble hurts. Uh, Isaiah Jackson came in and they they needed his size desperately. But again, none of these people could stop Anthony Davis tonight. When LeBron got down downhill, there was no stopping him from getting to the rim. Um, everybody, really everybody, was able to get to the rim pretty much with ease. Austin Reeves included. Um, so that was really the biggest story. the The question was coming in, you know. Could the Lakers stop this high-powered, fast-paced, historic offense, or um, you know, could the could the Pacers potentially make this a, a run-and-gun type of game and just you know make it a shootout that they end up coming out on top of? And like I said, this I think was the best that anyone has defended the Pacers this season. And you know, maybe maybe you just gave some of these other teams a little bit of a blueprint on how to deal with. Halliburton and this Pacers team, you know, on a nightly basis or, you know, when we get into the playoffs, this is kind of how you have to approach it. Like you said, the Lakers Mm -hmm. did a great job of trying to disrupt Halliburton. They were picking him up at like half court. They were trapping him high. They were not letting him just freely move about the court like he always does. Um, And that definitely made it difficult for guys to get those what seemingly feels like, you know, always open looks from three every time they play anybody else. Those looks were not there at the same rate. And then obviously you're not in that rhythm so that even when you do get some of those good looks, they're not falling at the the same, you know, clip that they usually do. I think there was a point in this game where they were like five for 20 from three. The Lakers did a really good job of putting a bottle on that um, better than than anybody else has at this point. Um, 100%. And that, that's kind of – that's kind of my fault. I didn't mean to cut you off, but like, but, but before I forget it, because you brought you brought it up, like kind of how in the playoffs, how you have to defend the, the this Pacers team. That's the main reason why I said it felt like a playoff game was because they made it a point to get the ball out of Tyrese about Halliburton hands mm-hmm. and have someone else beat them. And you don't see that as much in regular season games where you know you're just playing a whole bunch of games in a week, playing the back to back. Like in a playoff game, obviously a series, you know, you actually lock into your opponent. And like, all right, cool, we're, we're gonna like. Obviously, you're trying to win every night, but like in a playoff game, it's obviously it's heightened a little bit. You right. know, we're reading the scouting report. We're doing everything we can to try to beat them. And that way, I completely agree with what you're saying. Like, I think that's what the Pacers would face when the playoffs come around, like especially obviously seeing it now. But like, I think that would be their biggest problem is like when we can take Tyrese Halliburton, not completely out of the game, but when we could slow him down a little bit and disrupt their rhythm. How can we really respond to that? So I think I, I completely agree with that state, that statement right there. Yeah, and a big reason as to why they were able to, you know, kind of put some clamps on Tyrese, a guy who had the highest plus minus out of everybody on the Lakers, and that's Cam Reddish. Yes, sir. Was a plus 24 Mm -hmm. uh, through 33 minutes on the night. Um, His defensive intensity was off the charts in this one. Between him and Vanderbilt, Vando like that every night. So if so, I can't get like that, come on, man. We, oh, uh, that's what we was talking about already. Like, but listen, defense is a want to thing, bro. Mm-hmm. If you want to play defense, bro, you can be a solid defender, not elite. You know, only a few people got the trace to be an elite defender. But if you really want to, if you buy in, because obviously you look like Cam Reddish is like, all right, cool. That scoring stuff, if it comes to me, it, it comes. I'll get my open looks when they come, but I'll make my mark on the defensive side of the ball. And you clearly see it, it works out. So, listen, defense is a one-two thing. And personally, as 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 someone who's been watching the Lakers team for years, bro, I love defense. Like, you can give me – you can say, oh, listen, y'all could be the best three-point shooting team in the league or the best defensive team in the league. I'm taking defense 11 times out of 10. It's not even close. Mm-hmm. Like, watching, uh, watching um, elite defense from a team, not just from a player, but, like, team defense, it is the best thing in the world, bro. It's so fun to watch. Yeah, and he just – his point of attack defense all game was huge. He, he ended up, I think, finishing with two or three three steals, um, and he could have had a couple more. He almost got 
too handsy on some of them. But mm-hmm. like you said, the the intensity was there. The defense uh, made a huge, huge impact, specifically from those two, like Cam and Jared Vanderbilt playing the way that they did out of the gate. Like from the get go, you could see it uh, that they were up in Tyrese Halliburton trying to make him uncomfortable. Um, yeah, this Lakers team is now the the first ever NBA Cup winners. LeBron James is the first ever NBA Cup <laughs> MVP. Adam San- Adam I don't want to say Adam, Adam Sandler. Sandler. <laughs> Adam, Adam Silver was handing him the trophy. And he was like, I I don't know what other awards we have. Like giving an award to a guy that's won everything else might as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely well deserved. Um, I think there was questions about like if it just applied to this game or the entire tournament. And they like, clarified that it's like a full tournament award. Because if it yeah. was just this game, it has to be Anthony Davis. But no question, uh, no question. Yeah, throughout the entire tournament, LeBron was phenomenal. He was watching him against the Pelicans was, bro. I didn't even feel like I was watching LeBron. I don't know what I was watching that night, bro. <laughs> bro, he, the the game against the Pelicans, bro. It was like, I don't. Even, it was like, bro. I don't even know how. Yeah, like I said, I don't even know how to explain. Like he had full control of that game and did whatever he wanted. In all phases, every part of the core, offensively, defensively, he took like three charges in that game. Like, bro, mm-hmm. that that was game was like, listen, bro, I've been here so much. Y'all are just y'all not even on this level yet mentally. Not even just like physically, like mentally, yeah. y'all just not here yet, bro. Like that that was a clinic. I, that game was super fun to watch. All of that on top of the fact he knocked down two threes and then said, you know what, I'm feeling myself. What about a, a heat check from the logo? Cash. My jaw dropped. My jaw dropped when he shot it. I was like, "LeBron, right? Is that Curry?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, four for four from three. We talked about it before. LeBron, this is a career year from three for him. He's a career thirty four point six percent three point shooter. He's shooting forty point seven percent from three, which is one. 0.1% higher than his 2012 Miami season where he was like a – people to this day think that may have been the greatest NBA player ever, that version of LeBron in Miami. Bro, that's crazy, He's bro. shooting better than that. <laughs> How did I don't, he get what, better in year 21? I don't know. I literally have in my notes here, it literally just says, LeBron, what else can I say? Like, genuinely – I don't it, – it's going to sound like I'm writing like crazy, but, like, for real, what else can you say about it at this point? Nah, it's funny, though, because I seen a video. I was just scrolling. I seen a video, and the dude was like, bro, you know how, like, mentally taxing it has to be to be, a, like, a LeBron hater at this point? Like, not even, like, a Jordan's a GOAT guy, not a Kobe's – but, like, just, like, a just pure LeBron hater. Bro, it has to be frustrating, bro. Because, like, bro, when you think it's going to stop, when you think it slows down – Stuff like this happens, like bro. It just—it's never gonna end, bro. It's just—it's tough, bro. It's tough. It must be a very, very tough life to live. Yeah, and then not only has his athleticism not really diminished, like you can see that the the level of conditioning isn't the same, mm-hmm. which is I, it's fair, bro. Is thirty nine? It is right. fair that he's not able to just rattle off 25 straight points like he did when he was like 20 against the Pistons mm-hmm. in the playoffs. But for the moments where he has to turn it on, he still can turn it on and do all the same things that young LeBron used to do. And yeah. still getting above the rim. It is crazy to watch how he's really maintained this level of consistency. And like you said, mentally is like, they were talking about it on the broadcast that most players, I think Kevin McHale said it. He was like, by the time you really figure the game out mentally, you're usually right. too old to do anything about it. But it's like, we're watching a guy who came in and had such great IQ from a young age and how that grew and developed. And he's at a point now where he might genuinely be one of, if not the smartest basketball players we've ever seen play and still be, like, can you even say he might still be relatively in the peak of his powers? Like, yeah, it's crazy at thirty nine, like, how is that possible, <laughs> bro? Like, you're you're right about the conditioning thing, but if you're talking about then that, that's why it's perfect for in season tournament setting. If mm-hmm. you're just talking about, bro, you can get you can have three day, two three days of rest, one game, health completely healthy, 
even right now, there's not a lot of players I take over LeBron in, in that scenario. Like obviously series, you know, right. like injuries Looking for the future. All that's that, what I'm yeah. exactly one game healthy with rest. Th- I there might not be three players I take over LeBron even you, right now. You would be hard pressed. There's not many guys in the league who are going to be giving you the type of stat lines that he has put up in this in-season tournament alone. Mm-hmm. 38 and 5, 24, 4, and 11, 31, 11, and 8. Like he's putting up absurd stat lines. Yeah, so, bro. That's it's, crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, the MVP for him for this in season tournament is well deserved. Um, I, I don't know where that's going to, I don't know if it should even have an effect on legacy. People are going to bring it up. That's not something I'm looking to get into. Um, but at the end of the day, you can see that the tournament meant something to these players. People, I mean, these guys are competitive anyways in their nature. They're not just going to want – like you add a little extra incentive to anything, they're going to try harder. Um, so for there to be a trophy, for you to get half a million dollars just to be in Vegas, like that's something worthwhile to play for. Um, but – at the end of the day, shout out to the Pacers. Look, I'm happy for Tyrese. I think it's really helped get his name out there because I think their semifinal game was actually only their quarterfinal game was the second time they'd ever even been on national TV. <clears throat> it's crazy. That's wild. Um, so it's not a guy that's flying under the radar anymore. I don't think it should go as far as people getting into this. Oh, did the Kings trade the wrong point guard? Because I think we're doing a disservice to that whole trade because obviously I think both teams have gotten better (laughs) from it. To me, it's one of the better right now, like win-win deals. Everybody gets better. Multiple years from now, like, yeah, we can have that discussion about what Tyrese Halliburton really turns out to be when he hits that, you know, his full prime. But we've got a ways to get there. We don't need to try to project too far into the future. Um, But Shout out to this young Pacers team, bro. They were scrappy. They fought with a lot of good teams to get to this championship game. They fought all the way to the very end in this game um, against the Lakers. But like we both said, they had no answer for Anthony Davis. They had no answer for LeBron. They had no answer for any type of physicality that they brought. Um, so shout out to Darvin Ham too, getting himself, um, you know, this is good experience, not just for guys like – or guys like – on teams like the Pacers who don't have a ton of playoff experience. Right. It's good for Darvin Ham too. Well, obviously, obviously made the Western Conference Finals last year, but again, still only in his this is only his second season, right? As a coach. Um mm-hmm. like to continue to get that experience in these, you know, tough scenarios. Um, so very, very good all around. Kudos to Adam Silver. Give him a round of applause. End season tournament was phenomenal. He I'm cooked looking with that. forward. Right. I'm looking forward that. to it again next year. Um, between that and the playing, I'm loving it. I'm loving all the additions to to make some more meaningful games throughout the season. So they've been cooking. They've definitely been cooking. And I, I gotta apologize because that's like the first though, all these all this stuff you've been adding in. I, every time at first, at least me personally, I've been like, eh, I haven't been out, but I've been like, even when I heard in season tournament, I'm like, no what who gonna play hard? Like right. five hundred thousand, they they millionaires. Like, what what? That, that was this was gas. I'm not gonna lie. This in season tournament now it's like you, you gotta do this every year. It's not even like, uh, oh, are we gonna bring this back type of thing? Like, no, nah, you gotta do it every year. Right. Same thing, like you said, with the playing. Like, at first, I'm like, I get it for the COVID year to do it after. It's like, bro, eight teams, if you ain't make it, you ain't make it. But, I mean, the games, those games are those playing games are lit, bro. So, no, nah, Adam Silver is definitely doing his thing. 